Welcome to another edition of the eSpot with Camille. The eSpot is your location for the latest in entertainment, beauty, and design from the people who make it. Thanks for joining. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the eSpot with Camille. And welcome to another episode where we are emphasizing the lady bosses of March. And this episode is no different than any other one because today I have Nicole D. Tommaso, who is the leader in the Sauce Boss industry. That's why her name, the name of her business is Sauce Boss Gang. I mean, duh. So she blends a culinary creative art and a passion for business. Hailing from Columbus, Ohio, she fosters bold flavors and community engagement. With a love of art, Nicole crafts her hot sauces to ignite creativity and confidence emphasizing flavor and experience she redefines the hot sauce landscape with ethically sourced high quality ingredients her sauces transcend tradition and enhancing dish drinks and desserts hear that and desserts nicole's dedication extends beyond commerce sauce boss gang promotes community awareness and engagement embodying art flavor and empowerment i cannot wait for you to wait i cannot wait for you to wait i cannot wait for you to meet my guest nicole sauce boss gang come on up lady we are overly mm -hmm. excited to meet you hey everybody thanks for having me on camille this is so oh it's exciting. totally my pleasure and i love the fact that you went from aesthetics to hot sauce so please tell me how you made that transition yes that anybody that knows me for a length of time um it's always really funny to them and i get asked that question a lot my background is in aesthetics um but more importantly in that realm still product development and so that's kind of a the transition I made with Sauce Boss Gang, I, I truly just wanted to challenge myself, uh, pick a different industry I was also passionate about, but also use those core fundamentals of product development um, and my expertise to kind of go a different way, a different way in, in, in life. No, I love that because a lot of times I'll use this analogy. I normally use <laughs> barbecue sauce, but I'll be like, when people are telling me they're not interested in getting into an industry because it's so many other people already there. I'm like, well, have you gone to the grocery store lately and look at the thousands right. of barbecue sauce? There's still mm -hmm. sauces missing, you know? So obviously with Sauce Boss, how did yeah. you feel when you were like getting into the hot sauce industry and realizing there are a lot of other hot sauces already, but yours is unique. Yeah. So tell a little bit how you were able to overcome the idea that there's still already so many, why would, why would they need sauce boss gang, you know? So share a little bit about that. Yeah. I feel like a lot of us talk about oversaturated markets, but I mean, when we really look at a bunch of different markets, they're all pretty competitive. Uh, so I think it's just finding your, you know, your your kind of your thing your dna of your yeah. brand and so for me it was sourcing products that were flavor first heat secondary so that they can be used as a condiment but also as an ingredient and so that's why we bring to the forefront of our messaging to customers you can use our our uh, hot sauces and dishes drinks and desserts mm -hmm. um, so that was Kind of you know nobody's really publicized that or done that before having that be a main focus of their business and that is one of ours and so i think with that it really opened up a lot of doors to work with restaurants large liquor brands and just showcase more of a culinary aspect uh, as opposed to just hot sauce being you know a table condiment Mm -hmm. So this is something that not only will you see on the tabletops, but you might see behind the bar as well or in the in the dessert, uh, like behind the kitchen, behind the red carpet, so to speak. So mm -hmm. not in the industry because they're because like you mentioned, it's in your DNA. So explain a little bit about why, like what drove you into even getting into it, because I mean. Yeah. So many times you're tasting something and you might put something together like, oh, this is good. And some of your friends are like, oh, you should make this. You should bottle this up. So to explain to me how you got to that point where you're like, OK, I need to bottle this up. Mm -hmm. Well, honestly, uh, it really has nothing to do with hot sauce. So I'll explain it at the time when I was still in aesthetics and I was leaving an executive level position. I went through kind of this redefining moment of my myself. Um, I had grown that business for a few years and I was ready to exit and kind of find myself again. I found myself not really being happy and just kind of, um, 
I guess, second guessing my talents, which I think we can all relate to in different parts of our journey. And that's why it is so important, you know, who you surround yourself with. But going back to the question, for me, Sauce Boss Gang is kind of, well, it really is a company of self-belief that just happens to have condiments. So I wanted an everyday product that can inspire people. And so our new wave of Sauce Boss Gang, actually each each hot sauce tells a chapter of my story of coming into the boss, of that empowerment, that confident aspect to where I was no longer concerned, you know, what people thought of me starting a hot sauce company after being successful in the aesthetics industry. No, that's amazing. Because a lot of times I feel like people feel like once you've hit success at something, it's really hard to capture that again or to even find, yeah. I guess, a love again. Because I mean, I'm coming from the aesthetics world too. Like I can't, yeah. I can't think of myself in a different industry to some extent other than yeah. aesthetics and entertainment, but there will be a time mm -hmm. while I need yeah. to change, so to speak. So it's good to hear that you found yeah. a love again. And mm -hmm. so share a little bit more about that mm -hmm. story of how you fell in love with how you came up with the name, like the whole process. Like, I think yeah. it's important for women who are interested in starting their own businesses to just kind of hear from other women how they were able to do it. Because a lot of times we hear, you know, you go to business school or yeah. whatever, and it's like this very general mm -hmm. plan, but and everything changes every day. Like algorithms are changing every day. Yeah. Everything's changing. Like, so it's always nice to hear like fresh new ways that people mm -hmm. are not only getting into the business, but being successful. Yeah. So share a little bit about how, I guess the, the roadmap or the building blocks that you kind of got to where you are with nurse boss. I mean, not nurse boss, sorry. It's <laughs> oh, yeah. um, so a lot of boss things I have to deal with. Yeah. Nurse boss summit. I was just interviewing somebody oh, about so like funny. being dyslexic. It's like the same kind of um, pattern in a way. So bear with yeah. me and I'm off my no, ADHD okay. med, which sorry, <laughs> audience, I'm going to have to yeah. deal with a lot this season until I get back on them. But yeah, <laughs> having said okay. that, Again, well, really yeah, yeah, I don't have any background in food manufacturing or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I do have a background in developing a brand. And so for me, I kind of started it started at the core. What do I want the brand to represent? Um, and for me, it was confidence. It's all about pouring confidence in the world and also having striking labels. So we like to say we have um, powerful flavors with a bold presence. So all of our labels are also designed by Columbus, Ohio local artists. So we tap into that community. But um, doing a lot of research would be the short answer and collaborating with experts that have done it before. So I made a decision instead of going to a local smaller manufacturer, I went to a large manufacturer. Um, and I learned a lot that way. I also didn't want to be, I guess, held back by large volumes if I needed to. Um, so I called a bunch of manufacturings, I think, manufacturers uh, to start with and just really gained insight and knowledge on the cost of goods of what I was wanting to do, the volumes and then the price breakdowns on certain volumes. So that way, you know, as I grew, I knew, um, you know, what kind of money I could save and how that would affect, you know, the profit margin. So for me, I guess my advice would be, you know, go directly to the experts. There's no problem in that. And you can, you know, collect all the data, analyze it and make it your own and, and, you know, pivot and get creative from there. Now, when you were reaching out to these different, like, bosses, mm -hmm. so to speak, or people that you were, uh, that became mentors, I guess, were there people you already knew within your circle? Or were you like going out of your own community to find these people to help you? Uh, both. I think it, it was a mix of both. And, you know, I did have a lot of people that, like we spoke a little bit earlier, really put me in a box of the aesthetics industry. Yeah. So um, that was interesting and challenging because in the beginning, a lot of people that I went to for mentorship, I don't want to say they didn't believe in me, but they didn't get it. Okay. Um, so so it was a mix of both, which I'm very grateful for. And I think you should do that because there's a season to bring new, fresh perspectives mm -hmm. in. And that was it for me. Now, that's a good point because um, a lot of times for myself even, like, it's easier for me to ask strangers 
to be on my show yeah. to be a guest or something like that. Like it's easier for me to ask them than it is people I know in real life sometimes. Cause I like, so even good. for advice in, in that sense, mm -hmm. like sometimes it's easier from a stranger because they don't know you, they don't have any, yeah. um, perceptions of you. Like you said, like they yeah. kind of already felt you were in the aesthetic space, but mm -hmm. there's also that element of like people who do know you, they already know your limitations, your expectations or like the way you yeah. do things too. So they might be like, you get a good balance of both. So I'm glad you brought that up too. Yeah. And I think Absolutely. it's important for people to realize how, how hard it is sometimes for people to ask for help or to even reach oh, out to people. Yeah. So I wonder mm -hmm. for you, like, how, how did you go up? Like, how did you, because even like when you start a business, sometimes you want, like, they're like, don't tell people because then they might steal your idea or this, that, and the third. So how did you feel about even letting people into knowing about Nurse Boss? Um, there I go again. <laughs> I'm going to have to Nurse Boss. Gang, how did you even go about, uh, like, introducing people to Sauce Boss Gang? Um, yeah, you know, I think it took a while. I think it took, like, about six seven months before i had kind of like a bare bones foundation at that so okay. where i felt comfortable um kind of announcing it but even then i was very i will say very nervous and um but i don't know you just have to do it yeah. so it just is what it is the supporters i gained were great and people that didn't support it i i don't remember now yeah <laughs> <laughs> you probably do now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always funny how like once things are successful, it's like, I always believed in you. You right. know, but oh, even yeah. like sometimes it can I saw a meme not that long ago or Mimi, I don't know how they pronounce it, but um mm -hmm. where it was talking about how um spite is what the, what in, is the, what drives them. So even sometimes the naysayers can be the ones yeah. that encourage you to go even further because like you want to prove oh, yeah. them wrong, you know. But um, so when you were going through your different ideas, because hot, you weren't driven by hot sauce, were there other things that you thought of beforehand that you were like, oh, that doesn't really quite fit? Like what were your deciding factors of this definitely will work for me or this won't? Or like how did you even, because I think sometimes with business owners maybe or people who are looking into going to entrepreneurship may be so sold on doing just one thing. And then when there might yeah. be an easier option or something that fits them better. So how did you know when to pivot or when to stay or when yeah. was it like, when did you know this is that this is, this feels right. This, cause you've done it before with aesthetics. So mm -hmm. did you kind of like have that same feeling or was it something different that was like, okay, I know I'm uh -huh. onto something now. Yeah, you know what? I think it was an evolution because I don't have a background in food manufacturing or food service or anything like that. And, you know, now I work primarily with food industry uh, individuals, mixology and all that. Um, it was a big learning curve for me and I'm still learning to this day. I mean, it's it's a amount of knowledge I probably can't learn in a lifetime, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I will say just like the core message, seeing the brand come to life, all the sauces, really loving the flavors, believing in them um, and seeing other people get excited, kept me focused on just tightening the brand up and, and getting better feedback. Um, but by no means do I think I, I ever feel this is it. I'm always elevating, I'm always, mm -hmm. Um, picking apart my work for efficiency and, um, you know, productivity and, and all of that. But the core values of the brand are what I really, really love to promote. Yeah, no. So tell a little bit about that, the core um, parts of the brand, because I, I remember about the art and the importance of um, yeah. ethically sourced mm -hmm. uh, ingredients and so on. Like, so tell me a little bit about how you went about deciding what was the most important parts of your brand that you wanted to stay true to. Yeah. So for me, again, it goes back to confidence. Uh, Sauce Boss Gang is a real true testament to, again, the evolu uh, evolution of my character of overcoming limiting beliefs and self-doubt to enter an industry that I was not an expert in and that a lot of people, you know, just didn't understand. And um, so our taglines pour, pour with confidence, pour confidence into the world. And that's what we're all about. So we are getting ready to, you know, launch apparel and all that, that will reinforce uh, just confident, bold messaging. Um, so as long as I can do that um, with whatever product I make, I feel 
on track. <laughs> so I'm looking at some of these names of your products. Mm -hmm. And of course, obviously, we love the Confident World Collection and the yeah. Hot Box. <laughs> but oh, there's yeah, also yeah. some other fun ones, like with a coffin garlic habanero. I'm assuming that's super hot, like deathly hot. <laughs> and uh, then that's actually a medium. Oh, it's a, little, it's a medium hot. Okay. And then yeah. you have the Granada Spanish Chipotle. Um, yes. I'm not going to start butchering things, but Lemon Fuego. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. yeah. it's like there's so many like different flavors and things and going on. When you were when you were going through this, I know you were saying that it's something that you can it's like an ingredient that you can add to recipes. But when you were mm -hmm. going through this, was there certain things that were sticking out to you more? Was it more like the desserts? Was it more mixology? Because I heard you say both. Mm -hmm. Not really in the form of that, but the hot sauce collection, we have four flavors. I really wanted to embody kind of um, a flavor for everyone. So we do have like Granada's or Spanish Chipotle. It's extremely smoky. Uh, we have Toro Verde, which is our green jalapeno. We have Coffin, the garlic habanero sweet carrot, and then we have La Jefa, the boss herself, which is a garlic scorpion pepper. So we have a heat level um, approachable kind of for anybody's palate, and then just different flavor profiles that kind of embody the most popular um, hot sauce flavors, but our twist on those. Mm, I love it. Now, I saw on your Instagram that you're doing a huge promotion for March. And since it is March, oh, yeah. can you give yeah. us a little sneak peek about what we can expect to see? Or, well, I mean, especially the people in Columbus, Ohio, they're very lucky. Yeah. But for those of us outside of the state, um, what, yeah. what, are they get, what are they getting that we're not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're diving all in in March Madness. So we are launching Sauce Boss Gang billboards, 15 of those throughout the central and a little bit out outside uh, Central Columbus um, starting March 18th and those will be live through April 18th. So you'll basically, I'm sorry, April 8th, you will see our big logo, our Sauce Boss Gang drippy lips um, on billboards. And we'll, if you're not in Columbus, we will list those on our social media's outlets at Sauce Boss Gang. So you can find it, take a picture and then enter for a year of free hot sauce. Oh, I didn't know there was a contest you win. Oh, so oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna make sure I hit up all my friends in Columbus. Be like, hey, mm -hmm. <laughs> make sure you check out all the billboards with Sauce Bells Gang and take pictures of it. Send it to me so I can win some hot sauce. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, I'm excited about all of this. So what's what else is up on the horizon for Sauce Boss Gang? Where else can people find them? Maybe inside the state or outside of the state? Is there any? Um, yeah. Yeah, is there any yeah. things coming up? You can just head over to saucebossgang.com. We do full e-commerce. Shipping is super fast, um, and we do offer free shipping. Also, on the website, you can find local retailers to Columbus, Ohio. Um, so kind of whatever's convenient. We do offer some items online that we only offer online, though. So I always suggest start there first and see what you want and then go from there. Fantastic. Um, now, I mentioned that you guys are evolving. Are there any plans of expanding to other things other than hot sauces? Or is there something else up coming up on the horizon you can share with us? I always love an A Spot exclusive if I can. Yeah. Um, well, the, the short answer is yes. Um, I see us really growing into a lifestyle brand. So the one thing I'm working on right now are some lifestyle products, for instance, a candle. Um, so that will be very interesting, sexy, and unique. Um, and then again, apparel, which I'm hoping for sooner than later. Um, a lot of people ask for Sauce Boss Gang merch. So we're, mm -hmm. we're working hard to get the design in my head the way I want. <laughs> I, I know I've been butchering the name by accident, but it's such a cool name. I can't blame them for wanting to go around with mm -hmm. Boss Gang. Like, who doesn't want to be part of that, right? <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, especially with the drippy lips. Like, I love it. I mean, I, yeah, all of the above. You can tell the woman knows her aesthetics because she looks good, she sells good, and her products are good. So tell me a little bit... Um, uh, like just what you would like for everyone to know about Sauce Boss Gang, how they can keep in contact with you, where they can find more information about you and so on. Um, just share a little bit about that. 
Yeah, I think I want everybody to know that Sauce Boss Gang is a huge supporter of other small local businesses. Um, I'm a huge uh, advocate for using larger accounts that we secure, um, especially in the liquor industry, to drive local dollars back to small businesses. So I'm kind of a, you know, a branch between the small and the large right now. And, um, and yeah, that's super important to us as a company to help support small independent local businesses first you can keep up with us at sauce boss gang on all social medias TikTok, facebook instagram and shop the collection at saucebossgang.com we'll be launching a brand new custom website uh, right before our billboard launch on march 17th hopefully if everything goes according to plan <laughs> yeah you just, cross. you just never know <laughs> so, all the yeah. things are crossed <laughs> yeah. it's all good either way <laughs> everything happens at, at the right time right so again thank you so much for being my guest today i cannot thank you enough this was so interesting to hear all about your sauces, your company, how to create confidence with your products and so on. Like the whole thing. I love your whole messaging and everything that you're doing. So really thanks a lot for being my guest today. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. It was great to meet you and, and talk to everybody. For sure. Well, again, everybody, make sure you check out. Oh, I did it right the first time. Sauce Boss Gang. Sauce Boss Gang. Make sure you check out the poll <laughs> and learn more about Sauce Boss Gang. You can go to saucebossgang.com. It's all listed below. So make sure you follow, share. And if you like it, share it. So make sure you share this episode with your friends. Anybody that's looking at becoming an entrepreneur, give them some Give them a little pep talk. This is be this is basically what today was, a great little pep talk on mm -hmm. how to get in the industry, how to stay in the industry, and how to make sure you reach out to people that can actually help you. Um, mm -hmm. If there's anything we can ever do, make sure you reach out to the eSpot with Camille. I am more than more than glad to help. And CamilleCower.com for more information. And make sure you check out SauceBossGang.com as well. Thanks again for tuning in. This is the eSpot with Camille, and I'm your host, Camille Cower. Awesome. Yeah. No, you can get it. Looking exquisite. No competition. Stay on the pivot. Hey, be watching. They be plotting. She's so motherfucking independent. Mama be beat. Got on her grind. She had to get out her mama house. Daddy be tripping. Now she be whipping. Ain't no more.